And I do want to start off with the bachelors of food technology. Now I understand that the food technology um, course, the bachelor degree has got two specializations in there. That the is right. Yes. Food process engineering and food product technology. That's now, right. From someone like me who's looking at this and saying, okay, well, I don't really understand what the difference is. Yeah. Can you please tell us in very simple words, what is the, what is the difference in the two specializations and where does it actually take people to? That's right. And you know, as the name suggests, the food product technology, the emphasis is on the product. And of course, we are talking here of a food product. So, um, you know, the students are trained to develop a new food product. And what goes with it is things like, you know, the nutrition aspect of the food, uh, the rheology, the texture and, and things like that. So the emphasis is on the product itself. Whereas the food process technology, the emphasis is on the process of manufacturing that product. So it is more process oriented. So in food process engineering, um, things that are um, uh, covered are installation of equipment, uh, their um, development of production equipment, day-to-day uh, -day running and operation of those um, you know, systems. So that is the process side. Thank you. That, that really helps kind of set the scene for those of you that are looking at sort of getting into food technology, but don't know which side. Now, for someone that's looking at getting into the food technology program, do they start off on the same platform and then bifurcate into different specializations or do they just start off in totally different specializations from day one? No, you, you are right. Um, you know, they start off uh, uh, together. Uh, but right in the beginning, they can indicate whether they want to follow the food product technology stream or the food process engineering. But having said that, after one year into the program, if they decide to move from the food product technology to food process engineering, it is absolutely seamless. So there is no difference in that. Thank you. And those of you that are listening, I do want you to know that um, food technologists are an immigration's long-term skill shortage list. Um, and you know, these occupations are sought after. So you know, do listen to the session. My next question to you, um, to you, Professor, is around the masters of food technology. Now I understand there's two masters in the School of Food. Yep. Um, you've got masters of technology and masters of food safety and control. Yep. First question, how long are these master's degrees? Both and, these, yeah, sorry, go ahead. No, 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 go ahead, please. Yeah, so both these masters are 18 months. So what we call as, you know, 180 credits, because in one year we do 120 credits. So both the masters are one and a half years, 180 credits. Now, the difference between these two would be uh, one is a little heavier on the research component, whereas the other one is heavier on the thought component. So which one's heavier on, on which component? <laughs> oh, uh, so uh, like the master of food technology, you know, you have 60 credit worth of a thought component, and then it goes on to do 120 credit worth of research. And it is exactly the opposite for the master of food safety and control. Okay. So my question to you to break it down for those of us um, that are listening that may tend to get confused with that information. So if, say hypothetically, if we've got someone who's um, done, say, I don't know, bachelor's of food technology from overseas, um, you know, and, and they don't have those specific majors is now looking at con converting into a master's degree um, into New Zealand, coming here and really establishing a base, what would be your advice for them to know before they can decide which way they should be going, which masters to be applying for? It, it actually depends on the interest of the student. So the basic grounding, if it is in uh, food technology or even in biotechnology, those students are, are quite capable of doing these masters. At the end of the day, it is the yeah, the, you know, the individual interest of the student um, and that decides which master they want to do. Mm -hmm. Also, some of the students, uh, uh, they, they prefer the, the research heavy component, so they, they will probably go for that, you know, but those who prefer to be taught and then they go for the other. Program. But the duration for both the masters remains the same? Remains the same. The next question before I move away from the food technology um, department is, so you, we've talked about the bachelors, we've talked about the two masters, we've talked about the two specializations that exist within the bachelor's degree. My question to you is, and we'll start off with the bachelor's first. It's a, it's a three, three year degree? Or no, is it, it is a four year degree. 
Okay, so they come it's up an with an honors program. Yeah. So they come up with an honors program, which yeah. is and and I I must add over here, you know, the our, our programs are accredited by Engineering New Zealand, and they are accredited to the Washington Accord Standard or Sydney Accord Standard, which means these are internationally recognized. And with a qualification from us, uh, they can take the degree anywhere in the world. Brilliant. There is a cohort of people that may have done, say, a bachelor's of t- biotechnology or biochemistry from overseas, yeah. Um, yeah. and that are, they are looking at coming into New Zealand. Would these people be able to transition into the bachelor's of um, food technology with honors because it's a longer degree, it's slightly different with cross credits, or do these people transition into the master's? What, where is the pathway for them? Yeah, so it depends. If their bachelor is not at the honors level, obviously there is no direct transition into the master's program, right? Uh, But if they have done a four-year equivalent honors program, uh, then they can transition to a master's program straight away. Now, having done, let's say, a three-year bachelor's degree in food technology or biotechnology, and if they want to, then they will have to complete the bachelor's honors program with us first but there would be a cross credit. Now, based on the program which they have done, up to 240 credits we can transfer into our program. That and means- so what that, does that roughly equate to in terms of years? So it is basically an exemption of the first two years. That means that then when, when they join our honors program, they will then spend another two years to complete it with us. Brilliant. And guys, um, those of you that are listening, if you are in those cohorts, you've done those bachelor's degrees, you are looking at sort of cross credit transitioning into the bachelor's of honors, um, you can get up to you case by case. I do have to kind of highlight that. You may be able to get cross credits up to 240 credits, which is two years. When you finish the two year study in New Zealand, you will then get three year post study open work visas because those are bachelor degrees being awarded to you from an immigration perspective. Thank you for that, um, Professor.